Hello, viewers. Welcome to Xcoder videos and to the Micro Hard Session 10 video. I uh, had a little trouble with this uh, video the first time I tried to uh, record it. Uh, somehow I went through the whole video and my uh, audio uh, was not working correctly and I had a lot of video without any audio. So I'm going to go back and uh, try to redo it again. That will change a little bit of uh, the look and some of the behavior of micro, micro hard because uh, I've already completed the, uh, the two components that we're going to look at today in this video uh, in micro hard. But uh, I'm going to go through as if I hadn't and hopefully uh, this may be a benefit to you. In the uh, ninth video, the ninth session, we uh, opened up the register and the uh, uh, ALU. Well, we got the DFF and the ALU, and the register became available as one of our tasks, as well as uh, the ALU. And so we're going to first look at the register and uh, let's go ahead and go over there and take a look at the uh, uh, specification for it. And let's see, I need to get over to the right monitor. And uh, this is a one bit register, one bit memory. Uh, so it's really not a very useful uh, component, except that it can be used uh, to create uh, multiple bit uh, registers and uh, in memory. Uh, the register is similar to the uh, digital flip-flop. I guess we ought to look at the digital flip-flop uh, because we didn't do that last uh, time very well. Uh, the digital flip-flop is a is uh, similar to the register. The register is similar to the digital flip-flop with the exception that the register has a load input uh, bit that uh, specifies when the register should memorize the input value and put that to the output value. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, uh, digital flip-flop to see what the difference is. Here is the digital flip-flop and you'll see that uh, it does not have the load uh, input. Uh, the digital flip-flop saves the value it receives on its input and outputs that value one clock cycle later. There is an implication there that uh, might not be obvious uh, when looking at uh, at the uh, specification for this D flip flop, I keep calling it the digital flip flop. Uh, everything is digital in uh, in the uh, micro uh, processor world, but uh, this is just a D flip flop. I'm not sure what the D stands for, but uh, it receives its input and and outputs that value one clock cycle later. And the implication of that is, is that the digital flip-flop is somehow aware of the passing of time and the uh, presence of a, of a clock cycle. And most flip-flops are designed to memorize the value when the clock cycle goes high. And then when it goes low, uh, well, uh, when it goes low, then the output value is going to be what the input value was when the clock cycle went high, but it doesn't matter what the end value is uh, at that point in time. It could be either the same value or the opposite value from, uh, from the output, but the time that the clock cycle goes back up again, and remember the clock cycle is going to uh, be operating at a certain speed, 
when the clock cycle goes up again, then the digital flip-flop is going to go back to the input and get its value, and that's going to now be the new value for uh, the output. Uh, the example here shows uh, the the out uh, value. If you th if you think of this as time progressing toward the bottom, this the example shows the out value equaling the input value one line above it, and so uh, it's it's very time uh, sensitive. The register, on the other hand, is not that time sensitive. Uh, the register includes probably a digital flip-flop as part of its circuitry, but the only time the output of the registry changes is when that load value goes high. And you have to have, two conditions have to be met. The load value goes high and the clock value goes high and that's when the input value is then remembered and placed on the output uh, bus or pin in this case. Uh, if the load value goes low and the clock value goes high, the registry does not change. Uh, it stays whatever the value was the last time the load was high. And that clock cycle can go on and on and on and on and the output will stay the same as, uh, as it was when the load value went high. And that's the difference between a registry uh, component and a uh, DFF. So let's take a look at the um, design that I have uh, created within my digital application. You'll see uh, the digital application. These are all single bit uh, lines. Uh, we have the load input. We have the uh, in input. And then we have a clock. And uh, this is not going, the clock is not going to be represented in, uh, uh, in the design of uh, 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 that we create in micro hard because the, uh, uh, apparently the clock is assumed it's, it's a, it is a, uh, an implied component in, in that design there. But we put the clock here so that we could put this, this component through its paces within digital. And then we have the digital flip-flop. This digital flip-flop is the same as the, uh, I mean, this DFF is the same as the DFF in MicroHard, except that it has a clock input right here. Uh, and it also has a not Q. Not Q mean the Q is the output. Not Q is the opposite of the normal output. And uh, in my design, I have uh, a uh, multiplexer here, which is going to choose, the multiplexer chooses between two inputs, the input here from the end pin and the output from the output uh, uh, pin of the DFF. And the reason for this output looping back to the uh, multiplexer is so that the old value can be placed upon the input of the DFF when the next clock cycle comes in. And uh, as long as the load value is low, this value is going to recycle, come back into the uh, digital flip-flop, and then that's going to be uh, sent to Q, effectively it keeps Q uh, at the same value uh, even though time is passing and the clock cycle is working. So let's take a look and uh, see how this works. I'm going to start running in the simulation and uh, right now the output is zero. If I uh, 
put an N, if I supply a voltage to the N, make it a 1, and then click the clock so that the clock cycle changes, you can see that the clock goes high repeatedly, but the value of out does not change. The value of out will not change until load goes high and the clock goes high. Once that occurs, then the input value is supplied to the uh, DFF and the output value changes. Now the load, having done its work, will be turned off uh, under ordinary circumstances. And then N can do anything. We can, we can now uh, change N to a, a zero and the clock cycle can uh, continue to cycle and nothing happens to the output of the digital flip-flop. So this out stays the same even though the uh, time is progressing. And that is how, uh, this is how a simple uh, memory circuit would work. All right, so let's uh, stop this and I'm going to pull this over to my other monitor so I can see what's, uh, I can keep it in mind as we go over to uh, the design of the register. And <clears throat> I'm going to hit the register. We're going to tab over past the finished design to the working design. And uh, this is a pretty simple uh, component. It consists of only two uh, parts, the uh, multiplexer and the DFF. And uh, so we've got two inputs, in and load. We've got one output out. So let's go ahead and wire that up. And, and we will first uh, wire up the load input. Load input is going to go to our MUX, uh, and it goes to the cell uh, input for MUX. Then we're going to have N from our input go also to the MUX, but in this case it will be MUX N1. And we're going to send out to MUX N2, and that's all of the pins on the MUX. So that's finished. And I, now I believe the only thing that's, uh, that we're waiting on is uh, to wire up the DFF. So now we're going to send the uh, output of the MUX to the DFF.in, and now the DFF.out uh, will go to uh, the out value. And I just realized the out cannot be an input, so we need to come off the DFF out here. DFF out goes to the MUX N2, and so on. So that uh, that should get our uh, register. Let's do a test. And it failed. Uh, let's see. Uh, the test case where it failed was where both in and load were zero and out became a one or is one? Ah, I see. Uh, the test case, what happened was that the N was one and the load was zero and out remained zero. Here's the first failure right there. Let's, let's take a look at that failure right there. And See, the one is a one, load is one, the out is zero, 
And then on the next clock cycle, it should have been a one. So let's go find out why that didn't happen. We have the load to the MUX select, in to MUX one. Uh, 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 okay, let's see. I've got to, uh, I see, I know. Uh, what happened is the N1 is the default value, and we want uh, the DFF out to N1, not to N2, because that is the value that is passed to the uh, DFF when the load is in its zero state. So that's... Uh, I just uh, was thinking that it didn't matter, but it does. That has to be a 1, and this is a 2. N goes to N2. DFF.out goes to MUX.N1. MUX.out then goes to DFFN. DFFout goes to out. So let's try that. And now uh, there are verification passed. And uh, lots of test cases in this case, uh, three, uh, two pins in and one pin out. And I think that means uh, <laughs> I don't know how many uh, that uh, they've got for some reason that worked out to 96 uh, cases. So. I had to figure out exactly why that uh, why that does like that, but still, I, I, I guess because you can have you can have the same input here and a different output. So here's one and one inputs and a zero, one and one, and a one, one and one, and a one. Oh, each one of these, even though we have to test these cases to make sure it doesn't go to uh, uh, a bogus value, even though even after time, so uh, even after several clock cycles, you got to make sure that it doesn't go to a bogus value. So uh, I think perhaps they uh, uh, tested the same uh, condition more than once in order to make sure that uh, that it was working through time. So that is the completion of. Uh, the uh, register, and once I completed the register, uh, I don't remember if there was anything that was added to uh, the, uh, I don't remember if there was anything added to the, the uh, completed logics or not. Um, let me see if I can look at memory. Here we go. Memory register. No, I don't think there's anything completed to it. Eventually, we'll get multi-bit uh, memory here, but we haven't. We don't have that yet. Uh, the next uh, component that we want to uh, look at is the ALU. Uh, if you look at the specification over here in uh, the uh, workspace, it says that the ALU is an algorithmic logic unit specification. That's wrong. It is an arithmetic logic unit specification. ALU stands for arithmetic logic spe unit. And uh, it's it's called that because an ALU is responsible for doing arithmetic and logical comparisons. And uh, <clears throat> so it, we, it gets that name. The ALU 4B element, the ALU 4B element has two data bus inputs and uh, the and that are specified here in 1.4. And N24, so they're four bit wide buses. It has two uh, data inputs and writes the result of the data bus to the out, uh, output bus, out four. 
It also has a 4-bit opcode input where each bit determines what operation is going to take place, uh, possibly more than one operation. And then the outputs also have a single bit negative input, I mean, single bit negative output, and this is going to be high when the uh, output value is a negative number. And you recall a negative number is represented by the, the uh, high bit being a one. And so whenever the high bit on out four is a one, or the out bus is a one, then negative will be one. And then zero is going to be a one whenever output is all zeros. Each, each one of the uh, wires within the output bus uh, is a zero. And uh, that is, that is uh, all there is to the, uh, uh, the ALU. And uh, you can see a graphical representation here with the inputs on the left and the outputs on the right. And then down at the bottom, it shows a few test cases. Uh, I think there are, it looks like there's eight test cases. And if you're careful here, you can see how uh, these values uh, on the opcode bus impact the uh, process. Uh, an opcode of 0000, zero, zero, zero means that we're going to take the normal uh, N1 bus. We're not going to negate it because the opcode 4 is not a 1. So we're not going to negate it. The opcode 3 is not a 1, so we're not going to negate uh, N2. But opcode 2 is a 0. And if it's a 0, then N1 and N2 are added together. And then opcode uh, 1 is a 0, so we're not going to negate the output of, of the answer. So uh, 0011 plus 0101 is equal to 1000. Uh, this is uh, binary for 3. That's binary for 5. And 5 plus 3 equals 8, and that is binary for 8. And we could do the same thing looking at the operations all the way down. Uh, this also, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, it's going to be another add uh, operation. But if you add 1 to what this is, negative, if you add 1 to negative 1, uh, interestingly, well, is that negative 1 or... <laughs> I uh, I don't know that I am not sure if this is supposed to represent uh, two's complement or not. I, 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 I it's difficult for me to remember how the difference between two's complement and the simpler uh, a simpler uh, representation of negative numbers is just by uh, flipping these bits. Uh, that that could represent, for example, uh, a negative uh, a negative zero, but I think it's a negative one. Uh, negative one, uh, one one one. Uh, the way you change it is you you negate it, which would give us zero, and add one, and that. And then consider that as a negative number. That would be negative one. And so uh, one plus one, 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 one gives us zero. One plus negative one gives us zero. And the zero bit is now flipped, and the negative bit is zero because one, a zero is not a negative number. Not a positive number either, but it's not a negative number. Uh, and uh, then here we have some more uh, operations depending upon the, the, uh, the, the pins that are selected and so on. I'm not going to go through all of that. It would just take too much time. 
Uh, but uh, it would be useful uh, if this is new to you, especially it'd be useful for you to go through that and see how these uh, combinations result in the operations that are described over here in the comments. All right, let's go to uh, back to digital and pull up uh, our ALU4B. And let's see, uh, see if I can get that, make that a little bit smaller and move it over so that you can see all of it. <clears throat> uh, this looks kind of complicated, and uh, it's really not. Uh, it's, uh, it simply implements the logic uh, for the four bits of the opcodes that were described in the specification for the ALU. Uh, notice we have uh, two inputs here in one and two. These are four-bit buses. If I click right here, you see that the data bits for these uh, inputs are four, four-bit buses. And we go, uh, the, the what happens is the four-bit bus comes down here, and N1 goes to this multiplexer, and N2 goes directly to this multiplexer, to the to pin zero or uh, the, the zero pin here as it's, as it's uh, uh, marked. But they also go to these uh, not operators. And these not operators are also four bit operators. And so it can, it's going to not all four uh, bits on this bus and the not in take in and nodding it, that's going to go to the same multiplexer that the N bus went to. That now puts the N bus and the not N bus to this uh, multiplexer, which will select between these two buses based upon the value on this third pin or, or the fourth pin actually, if you count the zero pin is the first, second, third, and fourth. So this fourth pin is going to uh, specify which of these inputs gets out on the output of the selector. When, it, when this is zero, then the normal value from N gets on this bus. And when pin three or pin three is one, then the not N gets on this bus. Uh, right here. Then notice, and the same thing happens with uh, for not for N2 in the second multiplexer. These multiplexers then, their outputs go to uh, this adder and to this NAND gate. You can see uh, from this multiplexer, we go to uh, to the A pin on this adder and also to uh, one of the inputs of this NAND gate. The same thing here in for the second multiplexer, it goes, the output goes to the B pin of the adder and also to this pin of the AND gate. Uh, this adder has a, a carry input, uh, as all adders would, uh, or as all full adders would anyway. And, uh, but we don't care about carry in this operation, so we just set the care, the, this pin to uh, zero. And then the sum uh, is going to go to this third multiplexer. Uh, in this case, we don't care about the carry output either, so it doesn't go anywhere. The uh, operation the output for the NAND operator also goes to this uh, multiplexer. And so this multiplexer is going to select between the add operation and the NAND operation based upon the value on pin one uh, from the opcode going to the select. 
The next thing that happens is the output from this selector becomes the input of this fourth selector and the input of the uh, not operator here. And the output of this not operator is going to go to this selector. So this is going to select between the normal output from this selector and the not output from this selector. And that's going to be the answer that goes out to the out. And this selector is controlled by the first pin of the opcode. And uh, so basically by manipulating this, we determine whether the output will be negated or not. And uh, that's why that pin goes to that selector. Then the output goes here. So this is another four bit output. Then come down here, it's split out so that we can get to uh, pin th the, uh, the uh, high order bit of the, of the output. And uh, that simply goes out to the negative uh, pin because if this is a one, then the value that's on the output is negative. And then all four of the uh, uh, output uh, values, all four of the output uh, pins will, or all wires of the, of the bus, goes into this uh, uh, four-bit wide OR gate. And that is going to uh, determine whether any of these wires contain a one. And if any of these wires contain a one, then the OR operator is going to put a one on the wire right here. And then the NOT operator is going to flip that value uh, to a zero if this is a one. But if none of these wires is a one, then the OR operator is going to be zero. And this zero is going to be flipped. And now the output of this NOT operator is going to be a one. And uh, so zero would be one under that case. Um, now, it's not real clear here, but let me point out that uh, most of these wires are four bit buses. Uh, some of them are one bit. This is a one bit input to, uh, to the carry uh, pin, but all the other wires here on the adder are four bit buses. Then this is a four bit bus. Uh, this is a one bit bus representing the high order uh, bit from, uh, from, from this bus. And in the design, the, uh, this OR gate has four one bit inputs. Uh, that is going to be a little bit different in micro hard because the uh, four bit micro hard, the, the OR 4W has a four bit bus coming in, which kind of confused me at first when I ran into that, but uh, uh, that's okay. And, uh, but otherwise, this is all uh, the same. Uh, in micro hard, we just tie the output to the OR, OR input, there's only one. And then there's a single bit output from uh, the OR. What that means is that most of these components are four bit components. Uh, the not operators are all four bit except for this one, which is a one bit component. Uh, the adders are a four bit adder. This is a four bit NAND operator and so on. So those are different things that we need to, to keep in mind. Uh, in, the, uh, in my design, I'm going to name the not operators not one, not two, not three, and not four. And not one, two, and three will be four bit knots. And not four will be a one bit knot. I'm going to have four uh, muxes mux one, mux two, mux three, and mux four. These are all four bit muxes. I'm going to have one adder. It will be a, 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 4-bit adder, 
one uh, NAND gate that will just be called NAND and it's four bit. And then we'll have one OR gate and uh, this will be a, we'll have a four bit bus input. And then, uh, and I, I believe that specifies all of it. This is just gonna be called OR, this will be NAND, this will be ADDER. And I believe that's all the components and all the names that we're going to use. Uh, if I run this test, you'll notice here that I have eight uh, lines that are tests of this logic. And this, these values are uh, equivalent to the test cases in MicroHard that sh show in the uh, uh, that show in the specification, and so I just added those uh, those test cases in here so I could run them and see how that worked. When I click run the test, it shows each line here passing uh, just like uh, it ought to pass. And uh, but there are a lot more. There are a lot more of those uh, operations that could occur uh, if we come up here to analysis and click analysis. Uh, we get a long table, a uh, truth table for this operation, and we get uh, a number of. Uh, uh, solutions to uh, this, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure that out zero, and I don't know why, but out zero has two uh, lines of solution, and uh, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure. No, I'm, I take well, not yeah, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that out zero and out zero here. These are both identical, so I don't know if that's a bug in uh, uh, digital or if there's some reason because this is a uh, uh, well because it's a, a ALU. It doesn't have clock or anything, so I don't know why. Uh, don't know why it would would be output twice there. It's not a time sensitive uh, device, but there we go and. Uh, I wonder if uh, there's only one out zero column. So I'm not sure why that uh, why that shows twice. So that's all right. Let's uh, move this off. Come back to uh, our specification for ALU and. Uh, well, isn't that special? <laughs> I thought I had deleted uh, all of that before. I guess I just uh, got ahead of myself here for this. Uh, why don't we just go ahead and do do this and and instead of uh, instead of going through and, and wiring all this up, we'll just go through and explain the uh, the wires the way it is in the in my uh, current design. Uh, of course, we have all of the uh, the the four not operators, the four not uh, components, not one, not two, not three, and not four. The first three are four bit bus not operators, and the last is just a single bit operator. We have mux one, mux two, mux three, and mux four as uh, four bit bus versions of the MUX. We have one adder, which is a four bit adder, a four bit bus adder. And we have one NAND, which is a uh, four bit bus NAND. And we have the R4W, the one R or R4W, which is a four bit wide. It has a four bit bus input. And so let's uh, look at the way the wires come in. 
Uh, this uh, describes the wires as we had in the uh, uh, in digital. N1 goes to the not one N. N2 goes to the not two N. Uh, then the N1 also goes to N1 of the MUX1. And N2 goes to N1 of the MUX2 uh, component. Then we take the, this is not one, is the value that comes out of N1 negated, and its output goes to the MUX1 dot N2, and not two dot, not two dot out goes to the MUX2 dot N2. And so now we have the normal output from N and uh, the not output from N going to the MUX1 and 2 uh, selectors. For the opcode, we have opcode 4 going to the MUX1 select pin uh, so that uh, we select between MUX1, between the inputs of MUX1. We have the opcode 3 going to the MUX2 select input to select between the two inputs of MUX2. Then MUX1 out goes to adder 1 in. MUX1 out also goes to the NAN N1. The same value goes to both, both of these components, N1. MUX2 out goes to the adder N2, and MUX2 out also goes to the NAN N2. And so uh, we have the same values going to both uh, the uh, to the adder component and to the NAND component. Then the adder out uh, value goes to the MUX 3 N1, and the NAND out value goes to the MUX 3 N2. And now the values from the adder and the NAND are going to be selected by MUX 3 based upon the value of opcode 2, which goes to the MUX3 select bit. Then the MUX3 out goes to the MUX4 dot N1, and uh, as well as to the uh, not 3 N. In other words, we've got uh, two values that comes out of the out, the normal value and the knotted value. And the not three out goes to MUX four N two. So we're choosing between the negated value and the non-negated value in MUX four based upon the value of that low order bit in opcode on the opcode bus going to MUX four dot select. Now we're getting toward the end of the uh, logic. MUX four out goes directly to out. MUX4 out 4, the uh, value of the fourth pin goes to, uh, goes to the negative output of the component. Then the MUX4 out goes to the input of this OR, this four, OR 4W component. And then the OR dot out goes to uh, NOT in, so essentially making the or into a nor and the not out then goes to the zero so if zero is one the output is a zero otherwise the output is one well i didn't change anything there so when i hit control enter it should pass everything uh pass give us all the pass uh, this tells us that the total nan can't count for this component is 314 and uh, nowhere near uh, a record there but uh, uh, a lot of a lot of NAND gates and every every test case here in this case uh, with N1, N2 and opcode all values based upon these 12 uh, bits are going to be tested uh, over here to uh, on the right. And uh, if we were to scroll down here, I think that 
Well, that's going to be a lot of uh, test cases, and uh, I don't even want to go. I don't even want to go all the way down. It's going to be uh, uh, several thousand, I think, uh, test cases uh, for what what that would be. Just uh, just eight bits would give us two hundred and fifty six, uh, and maybe. Uh, just one more, one more bit would be 512, 1024, 248, 4,096 uh, test cases is what uh, what we would have here if we were to go all the way to the end. 4,096. And all of them passed. We'll click enter. And uh, it updates my solution as if I made a change. Now, what we've got here uh, as a result of completing both of these uh, uh, components is we've got a new task for ready for us, which is the register 4B. We're going to make a 4-bit memory uh, component in our next video. Let's... Uh, Go over and I take a look. And it looks very much like the one bit registry uh, uh, that we made. And uh, the only difference is instead of one bit, one bit input, one bit output, we're going to have four bit inputs and four bit outputs. Load is going to be just one bit and, uh, and so on. So that will be a fairly easy one uh, for us to do. Uh, we didn't get any new briefings uh, as long as far as I can recall, no new briefings, and uh, that that's the only uh, new task that we have. And so uh, in our next video, we'll come back and we'll complete the register 4B, see what that does for us in giving us additional tasks and information and uh, and so on. Well, I want to say thank you for watching Xcoder videos and consider giving us uh, a thumbs up if you like this video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please post them in the comments below.